Well, would you, Adam and Evit? He's made it through a week on the MBN. Adam, so great to have you on the channel. It's been great. I mean, it's been a little struggle with you, but I think we're getting there, right? We are. I think so, for sure. So, cool stuff on the horizon. New Bosch coming from Commensal. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Um, we've also got Fudzua have come up with something pretty special on their on yeah. their motor updates. And what about this then? Uh, Thirty years of Yamaha and the e-bike business. I didn't know. E-bikes have been going for 30 years. Well, you know, a few comments. <laughs> Yamaha were apparently the pioneers of e-bike systems. I do remember the days. Rotwild. That's how you say it, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or Roadveild. Road Roadveild, road road yeah. So they've come up with something new. They have been busy, busy, busy boys. They've come up with what they define as the border crosser. Is that a great name? I, I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a bit easier than the RE735. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. Um, but something special about this one, right? 100%. Uh, obviously, got a large capacity battery. Um, EPA201 motor from Shimano. So we're talking uh, full fat, right? 170 mil travel. I get. I guess the great thing about Roadfield, they've actually made some very good standout bikes in the past few years. You know, we were at Garda. We saw the 16 kilo TQ motored bike. That's the lightest TQ motor bike on the market. One of, I guess, is the Scott, isn't it? The Scott Lumen. Oh, that's that's very probably true, yeah. 15 kilos as well. But I think they make quite different bikes. I mean, they had the. They had the 375, I always get confused with Road Wheel because they got the 735, the 375, but the 375 was also 170 mil travel, an enduro bike, which you could have the e paid motor either 60 newton meters or 80 newton meters. Yeah, I don't, I've not heard of many other brands doing that. So they've been doing some special stuff. And I mean, this one follows suit, right? It's, there's a few little key points. The, it's full carbon frame, 100%. That's one of the biggest parts of this. Um, bigger battery. But what's quite 720, cool? 720, 720 watt hours. Yeah, and it comes with a door, a hatch. Can't beat a good door. Considering it's 22.1 to 2.6 kilos. Yeah. That's that's great design, really. Yeah. I mean, it comes at a price though, Adam. I mean, you're looking at 11,000 euros for this bike. A bit too dear for my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think another thing which is great about uh, Roadfield bikes, folks, is the geometry. Uh, 74 degree seat tube angle, 64 and a half head tube angle, which you'd expect with a bike with 170 mil travel. Yeah. Reach, Adam. 465 in size large? That surprises me, actually. It feels a bit old school. I'm it's not adverse to a slightly shorter reach, but yeah. in a large, that, that's pretty out there. How tall are you? Six foot, bang on, one eight three centimeters. So I like I I normally go for a reach between four seventy five and five hundred. That's that must my ballpark. I'd say four eight five is is a spot okay, on spot on reach for me. Uh, but there you go, folks. Uh, very nice bike from Roadfield. Um, uh, you know, thousand pieces of carbon fiber. That's what you expect for a bike made out of carbon fiber. I mean, you know, you got pre prag, you got cloth in there. Uh, but I think the big news this week, Adam, is the new range of Bosch equipped. Bosch powered e-bikes from Commensal. I think it's very, very interesting to start seeing Bosch becoming far more prevalent on direct sales brands. And I think Commensal have been a really good, really key partner in that. Mm. I mean, I was a big fan of the TR and the SX. I rode, rode these bikes uh, back in Andorra. I think it's a beautifully shot video with uh, that, that Commensal have produced. It's, I think it's out in Andorra. Looks like it's been it's been shot in a in a few different seasons here with Alex Rudo, I think is the rider. Yeah. Um, but, but folks, beautiful images aside, what is the detail on these bikes? Now there's two bikes. There's the TR and there's the SX. Um, yes, these are, are totally new bikes in the range, aren't they? Now the the Meta Power SX has 170 mil travel front, 165 rear. I might need to stop you there. Stop away! The Bosch equipped ones are, in, as far as I'm aware, they have the Shimano equipped ones. So they are in, oh. in almost identical bikes. Oh, oh. Bar the motor system. Right, okay. And battery, of course, and, and all the rest of the governs, as it were. Well, you say that, I mean, that they're radically different bikes. There's gonna be different motor housing, cradles, different battery housings. What are you saying? Geometry. Geometry. Hold on, are you saying they still are you saying they still produce the Shimano bikes? They're as far as their website is concerned. Sorry, but... sorry folks. There you go. Fact checking from Adam. Fact checking, I'm going to write six. So anyway, let's focus on the Bosch bikes. They've got the smart system on there, Bosch smart system with 625 watt hour battery. You've got the top two mounted uh, system controller with a little remote and the handlebar. It's very clean. Very clean. It's my favorite Bosch uh, setup. 
Um, and yeah, 625 watt. I remember Bosch do do a 750, but not on these bikes. But I think obviously they're looking towards bikes which are more lightweight. Great angles on this bike. It, it's very common style. It's very, very common style. They do not shy away from a slack head angle. Do you think there is a very common style thing, dear? I do. I mean, they've they've been pushing the geometry out quite a bit in the last three to five years, I'd say. Do you know what this this? I'm thinking we've got the S, the Metapower SX here. We've got the Metapower TR. I mean, similar similar kind of bikes to the decoy. Do you think? I'd say that these. Yes, yes and no. I'd because say that these are a little bit more out there to okay, some degree. Okay, right. I mean, the Metapower TR's got 150 front, 140 rear, 29 inch wheels. Remember the SX has got 29 front, 27.5 in the back. Same Bosch Smart System, same battery capacity. But again, you know, not much, not much in, it in the in the in the geometry. Again, 64 degree head angle on this bike. Designed more of a bit of an all rounder, the TR. Yeah, I, again, you know, you know the way I'm leaning towards. I'm an SX guy all over SX, MX, whatever you want to call I mean, it. But yeah, I mean, you're an SX guy, S and not from Surrey SX. guy. Come on, Surrey guy here, not SX. All right, um, 63.5 degree heading up. That's slack. But common style, folks. Uh, what you think of their new bikes? Beautiful video. Isn't that a beautiful video? Beautiful video and beautiful bikes. Yeah. Uh, next up, folks, Polygon's Siskiyou. 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 Siskiyou Wildflower, is that, was that what a Siskiyou is? You, you, you <laughs> got me on this one, but yes. Poly, yes. Polygon, I think, I'm going to say it, I think some of Polygon's geometry in the past decade has been a little suspect. It's been questionable. Uh, but I think on these bikes, Adam, they're, they're, they're on the money. I, 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 yeah, and talking about money, I'm a big believer on price point Look being at these huge prices. Price. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> three, six, US dollars, 3,600 US dollars. This is what we need. For the T6E? This is what we need. I, I've, <laughs> I have come from direct sales brands and again, these prices, you can't really beat them. That's you can't. I mean, insane. look, I mean, there's the Shimano EP6 motor on there, right? It's not It's not quite what the EP8 motor is, but it's largely the same motor. It gets you to the top of- 504 watt hour battery, just have two 504 watt hour batteries, right? So geometry in these bikes, 65 head angle, 485, 485 reaching a size large. Yeah, there that's you my go. pack, that's Two my one. perfect polygon. Keep coming. I'm talking about this, this bike I'm talking in question is this is the Siskiyou, Siskiyou T6E, which comes in uh, 29 inch wheels, but as is a flip chip to allow for 27.5 as well. I do like the option of mixed wheel size. If you like that, what about the T7E, which has got a larger capacity battery, uh, 630 watt hour, plus the new EP801 motor. I'm keen to see that EP801 and really understand the difference between that and the EP8. Yeah, um, I think the key thing about the EP801 is you can use auto shift and free shift. You know, I'm gonna say it again, three weeks running, I think is this is one of the biggest steps in technology on, on mountain bikes in decades. I, I wouldn't agree with, I wouldn't agree more with you. It's honestly, it's fantastic. Uh, but folks, uh, Polygon Bikes, let's move on now, Adam, to Yamaha. 30th anniversary bike. I didn't know that <laughs> they've been making e-bikes for 30 years. Call me, call me crazy. I don't, I didn't know they, that. They, they were one of the first to make a town bike 30 years ago. Obviously, not. We're not talking mountain bikes. We're talking e-bikes here. Yeah. And so this um, is pre mid drive motors. But what do you think about this bike here then, with a PWX3 motor on it, um, folks? What do you think about this bike? Yeah, it's got an interesting frame design. I, I would oh, say. Oh, you're so, oh, you're such a diplomat, aren't uh, you? Fashion and <laughs> aesthetics really do play this, key. You can agree with me, people, right? YDX Morrow. It's the YDX Morrow. YDX Morrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think that I, I'm a big fan of that shock design. Shock placement, it's very reminiscent of another bike brand, but I think it would be very interesting to ride. It doesn't quite look as low sprung as others. Yeah. But do you know what? I, I think the Yamaha has one for the audience to, to have a look to to comment on. Do you yeah, think? leave a comment below on what you think about it, and we'll go through these in another video. But we would like to see more Yamaha e mountain bikes, wouldn't we? For sure. I I can't say I've seen a huge amount since the days of original high bike. Huh? When high bike first came out, they had Yamaha motors on them. 
They did. Yes. They did. Sorry, that was they, my first they experience did. They did, with Yamaha they? motors. Wow, that's like almost a decade ago. Yeah, I remember it. it well, was... I, do you remember the high bike? The I think the high bike with the which was a downhill bike. It was yellow, white, and red. I, did, I rode that one. Oof. I uh, rode it de-restricted. <laughs> And again, questionable geometry. Yeah. Uh, but folks, we're going to conclude this week's news with news of Fazua. Now, we did hint on this at Garda recently. Uh, news on Fazua's uh, firmware update on the Ride 60 system. You wrote it, didn't you? I, I was really lucky, to be fair. Um, one of the brands out there which is equipped with the Fazua motor. Just, Fazua. Tell, just, just tell them. I rode a pivot and it had the new update on that motor. Holy moly. That bike, it was like an instant engagement. You didn't, it didn't feel like an e-mountain bike with potentially small amounts of drag or a build up of that power. It was like, bam on, bam off. Yeah. Impressive. Uh, it is impressive. It's an impressive company. They make, you know, like, you know, the, the bikes, the pivots, as you mentioned, you've got the, uh, the transition bike, the yeah. relay, is it? Yeah. Um, yeah, looking forward to more cool stuff coming from the guys from Munich uh, in the months ahead. Uh, folks, that's it for the news this week. Adam, anything else? That's it. Yeah, I, the only thing I'd say is with that Fazua motor is it's a really cool thing to have a free update if you have a pivot or a transition or anything with that Ride 60 motor. You almost get a new motor. You're kind of right. And that's the cool thing about e-bikes, isn't it? You, you, you last, whereas a mountain bike, you're going to go get a new mountain bike. Yeah. With an e-bike, you can get your bike updated. Yeah, and what? arguably from your phone. Yeah. Leo, what are you going to say about that? It's cool. It's cool, is it's that cool. it? It's cool. Very cool. We get a thumbs up, at least. <laughs> give yeah, us a thumbs up. we get no, give two us a thumbs, thumbs up. <laughs>
unrideable, the yeah. limestone. So we were uh, actually, me and Leo have been to this lab. Yeah. We went there a year ago to in the wet. In the wet. And it, you, you, you were about to me, right? <laughs> yeah. We were literally sliding down there, right? Oh, you managed God. to get him to talk. The slab must have, <laughs> the slab must have been really, really de like death defying. If we got Leo talking. It was, it was, it was. And what about uh, Gabor Fabian? Or is it Fabian Gabor? Gabor Fabian. Gabor Fabian. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Um, anyone know the evaluation for the slab? Does that mean the angle? I'd assume it means the angle. Oh, well, the angle is like a bit like that, a bit like that. And literally the top bit was a bit like that. I'd say the top bit was... So get your protractor out on screen. Uh, just the top to... bit was, top bit was definitely the steepest gradient of being up on an e-bike for sure, because I was breaking traction on the back and they're trying to get over the front. And it, oh, it, was, it was a nightmare basically, and uh, glad it didn't last. So yeah, protractors on screen, we're talking about that top? About that, that much on the top, yeah. 60? Yeah, I mean. It's a good 60, I think, on the top. Probably 40 further down. And that, that's the enter? I'd say 40 to 60. Roughly. With a gradual gradient? Increase? No, mm, yeah, well, kind of, yeah, it was a long bloody way. So yeah, <laughs> it was gradual. <laughs> Yeah, I hope that answers your question, folks. If you've got any more questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and we will do our best to answer them on next week's show. UCI, UCI Mountain Bike e Enduro World Cup. You remember that because it's coming on the channel this weekend. Yes, in one of my dream riding spots. Finale. Well, you get your sorry ass down there and get entered into the World Cup race. Let's get the fight split now, come on. <laughs> Uh, folks, what we want to know, what do we want to know actually, Adam? We want to know, are you going to be catching the highlights of the race over the weekend? Mm -hmm. We uh, we interviewed actually the reigning champion, Yannick Pontal, on the channel last week. So if you've not seen that, uh, have a tech catch up with, with one of the fastest e enduro well, actually the fastest e enduro racer on the planet. And probably one of the tallest. Yeah, he is pretty tall. Uh, he, legend, absolute legend. It'd be really interesting to see who wins this year because we've got some new riders. We will, in a minute, we'll come on to some people who have been who are, who are newcomers. But um, Pontal is a favourite. Uh, you, you know, the likes of the Gas Gas team, Alex Marin, Johannes Fishback. Um, I think it's going to be a right a right dog fight, to be honest with you. A new 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 races coming over from downhill, in there. New races, new locations, mm -hmm. new bikes. Yeah. Uh, folks, don't forget to tune in to uh, GCN and Eurosport or Discovery uh, after the race to see the highlights. So, following last week's difficult, difficult bike vault, <laughs> vault of my first one, <laughs> I'm going to throw it back over to Steve right now. All right. So, we have Brian on his wonderful Trek Rail 9.5 Gen 4. Mm -hmm. Are we talking nice? Oh, super nice, Steve. It's, it's got to be only one way, isn't it? You've got a black bike, you've got the Black Eagle up for Augustus. It's got to be a super nice. Oh, oh, agree. Yeah, next up is Kum Khan. Oh, a place very close to my heart. One of my... How many close to your heart places have you got? I've, I've pretty much named them all. <laughs> Look, nice and super nice. Super nice. And what about this KTM from James, Machina Prowler Master, Switzerland? It's on Three, you. two, one, super nice. nice. <laughs> Oh, look at this beautiful shot here. We had him on the show last Terry, week. Terry, Terry. Well, let's get Terry on here again. Yes. Terry's in the woods in his lap here. Overvolt. Big fan of a little ripper yeah. on an e-bike. Super nice. Go on, Terry. Oh, oh. How many Tez have you got on your on your laptop? That, that That's probably from the first every MBM video. Dude, this is like, I know exactly what's on each of those tabs. All right, find me the latest socials. Latest socials? We're seeing the latest from you guys. There you go. Getting social. There, there you go. There it is there, look. I mean, before we go into that, can I say, uh, talking about racing, Alex Marin and Johannes Fishback have been out in their gas gases. And this is from... Gases. Gases. Uh, on their gases. Is that, that's, that's the That's a term. kind of trials talk, really. We obviously come from a trials background. Oh, is this with you? We're talking social. I, I just I just saw their clips this week and I thought they're absolutely ripping and they could be hot content. I, I wouldn't say number one. I, I'd say top, I'd say podium places for these guys. I definitely think so. Marin, I've got a keen eye on this year. Yeah, I and mean, he's the right weight, he's the right speed, he's, you know, he's rapid. Uh, have you actually, talking about socials, have you seen Bosch have got, uh, they've been welcoming people on their social? Yeah. Uh, in this Toma this week. Which is uh, cool. It works out quite well with the release of the new Strive. 
It does. It does. Those, those go hand in hand. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of a mama back into racing. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the first round of the World E-Bike Series happening in France in Monaco. Alp Martin, 21st of May. Organisers posted this recap following some action. Uh, that was that's a separate series, which we're talking about there. Uh, and then Chris Ackrig, um, or E. Craig, as he's now calling himself. I, I do like <laughs> it's It's a secret like of mine, but E. Craig, love you, it. You need to go ride him with old Ackrig. He's, he's a boy and a half, honestly. I'm what, terrified. What, see, what he's doing there, what he's actually doing there is, it, it is terrifying. And like the fine... The fine line between success and failure, what he, what he does. I would be down in those rocks. I've seen the video it's, you did with him. It's mind blowing. It really is mind blowing. As and long like, as I don't get put to do this stuff, then then we're good. Uh, I, I hate to be rude, but you wouldn't even get like two foot into that line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's mental. <laughs> no, I guarantee crazy. it's mental. Some great social posts there, uh, folks. Uh, coming up on the channel this week, we've got an in-depth look at Giant's live valve system. That's a fully automatic electronic system on their range of bikes. Uh, I think it's a great feature, Adam. Um, in many ways, I think some of the electronic stuff we're seeing on e-bikes, such as you know, the auto shift. The great thing about auto shift is that uh, it's not only is it good for tech and technical terrain, but do you know when you see lots of people ride e-bikes and they're in the wrong gear? And to get the most out of an e-bike, you need to be in the, riding at the right cadence. So Auto Shift yeah. allows you to do that. And in a similar vein, Live Valve, you know, to get your get your bike set up, balanced for different types of climbing, I think it's a great thing. You Live mean? Valve is one of those things that I think can really, really push people apart. I think it's an interesting topic, Whoa. but it's a very controversial topic, nonetheless. Crikey, it didn't expect to end on that bombshell. Tagline, do you need it? I think it definitely has its place. The same as order shift and free shift. For sure. Same as same as flight attendants, same as lots of these things. It's, you know, it's not for everybody, but there will be people who will benefit from that technology. I think everyone can benefit from it. Need is another question. Okay, on that note, folks, uh, let's know your thoughts on the new Commensal Meta TR and Meta SX bikes and those fantastic value Polygon bikes, right? Crazy. And uh, let's hope, let's hope one thing, that Adam will be back for next week's show.